Are you one of the many who was introduced to the world of Soulsborne games through Elden Ring? Or perhaps you've tried Dark Souls or Sekiro before, only to give up in frustration? He pulls your ass out! Well, fear not, because with patience and willingness to learn, anyone can conquer these notoriously difficult games. And I hope Elden Ring clearly proved that to you. While we are waiting for the Elden Ring DLC, there is no better time to dive into the previous forms of games, so in this video I'll be sharing some insightful tips that I, frankly speaking, haven't seen a lot of people cover for mastering not just Dark Souls but almost every Soulsborne game out there. This video does not contain any major spoilers for you to experience these games fully. Tip number one, play the way you enjoy to play. Don't pay attention to gatekeepers. If you summon plays for help, it doesn't count. And every other shitty take you see on the internet, ignore that. If playing with friends or even strangers makes you excited, go for that jolly cooperation. Using overpowered weapons or broken strat brings you a lot of joy playing the game. Good, keep going. If you have a great time, that's what matters. There is a high chance you'd like to try something new on your next playthrough. And this is where you start thinking of different challenges for yourself. I, for example, recently for the first time in so many years tried to beat Dark Souls with bow only build. By the way, you should check it out, it's a great video. Tip number two, accept death is a way of progression. For so many years, games taught us that if you die, you lose. But in Soulsborne games, that is not true. If you die, you progress. Because with every death, you learn something new. And I have never known defeat. Ho ho ho, until now. Activate. Blade of And since in games like this you are going to die a lot, to keep your sanity and controller safe, I'd recommend you to change your perspective on death. When you don't treat it like a failure, you'd have more fun playing Souls-like, because you'd see a lot more hilarious and absurd situations instead of just death. <laughs> and that also may change your perspective on a big chunk of content in the game. Okay. I order food. Do not play every souls like the same way. Estimate the pace of the game first, check its core mechanics. Just because you were able to beat Elden Ring, spam and roll button and jump attack, it doesn't mean you can approach every game the same way. Some games may be faster or slower or have entirely different core mechanics that at first sight look the same. By taking the time to understand the game's unique features, you will be better equipped to tackle its challenges and progress through the game more efficiently. Watch this. I'm gonna parry this. Check community pages for community events. These games are not new. So the online component may be not that active like during the release, but the community does a great job at maintaining the activity in those games. So don't miss out on the incredible community events that make Souls games truly unforgettable experiences. And the best part, you can easily join in on the fun by checking out community pages on Reddit and Discord to stay up to date with upcoming events. So. Why not dive back into a classic Souls game and trust me, you won't regret it. And last but not least, for the love of God, please give PvP a chance. Almost every forms of game has PvP and most players tend to ignore it for a lot of reasons. Some people don't feel comfortable playing competitive games, some people are afraid of other players who they think will be more experienced and they hate the idea of dying, some people hate the clunkiness, but still, I insist on giving it a try, but only after you acquire tip number two. Interacting with other players is what will be giving you a unique experience for years. Once you find the fun in those interactions, I swear, you'll love it.
PvP in those games is something more than just win or lose, and on top of that, Dark Souls games have a range of covenants that open a good chunk of content. New spells, weapons, armor, it's way more rewarding than Elden Ring's PvP. These are 5 tips that you can apply to any Soulsborn game and drastically change your experience, and before we dive into a few of these games more deeply, I have an extra tip for you. Support Soulsborne creators. I'm not implying anything, but I do. If it's your first playthrough, I'd advise you not to pick the Master Key at the beginning. Not because you have to experience all the hardships of Blight Town or anything, which you have to know, but because having a Master Key in your inventory will damage the no way it leads there moment. Dark Souls is famous for its amazing interconnected vertical level design and the master key may change that experience a bit. I know, I know, it sounds tempting to have a key that unlocks many doors, but isn't half the fun of Dark Souls and getting lost and suddenly fighting yourself in the filing shrine? Number 2. If you want a good melee weapon from the start, you can grab a Spy Hunter in the Phylic Shrine, the Claymore on the Bridge of Underberg, get the Drake Sword by shooting the tail of Hawkeye Drake under the bridge, or you can kill this merchant for Uchigatana. If you're lucky enough, you can get a cool weapon from killing the Black Knight. And if you're a mage, you don't need any of this. Your life is already easier. Number 3. Learn to manage your stamina. Dark Souls is less forgiving in role spamming, you better use it carefully, it's not Elden Ring, don't just roll spam your way through every fight. Number 4. Choose your build at the start. In Dark Souls you can't respect your attributes, if you want to bonk all the bosses, you probably need strength more than intelligence. And you never, you hear me, never level up resistance. If you don't know what to level up, Put those points into vitality and endurance. You'll never miss, trust me. Number 5. You can upgrade your Rastus up to 20 flasks. To do that, you need to kill Pinwheel, an easy boss that you can find in the catacombs, but I'd not recommend you going there right away. 10 flasks from kindling the bonfire is enough for the good portion of the game. But if you still decide to go there before obtaining the Lord Vessel, after you beat the boss, come back. Do not go further to the next bonfire or you might be stuck in this location forever without the chance to go back. Learn to play without locking on enemies. By freeing yourself from the constraints of the camera, you'll gain a new level of control and flexibility, allowing you to better anticipate enemies attacks and position yourself for strategic advantage. This skill is really helpful because sometimes in these games the camera is the true enemy. Oh, fuck it. Use humanities to heal yourself as your last resort if you are out of Estus flasks, but feel that this is the run. Do it. Humanity will restore all of your health. Yeah, you might lose it if you die, but it's no fun when there is no stakes. Am I right? And the last tip for Dark Souls that will improve your experience is to have in your inventory at least one purification stone. You'll thank me later. Tip number one can be controversial and not everyone will agree on it, but give Dark Souls 2 a chance. Play it. Dark Souls 2 has always been a hot topic among the Soulsborne community. Some people think it's a masterpiece, some people think it's the worst game of all time, and they might haven't even played it. Oh no! So don't listen to anyone, just try it and decide for yourself. If you've successfully passed the first tip, your next step is to make sure you level up your adaptability. This stat is responsible for your invincibility frames. To be able to roll comfortably and not feel any annoyance, level up it till your agility stat reaches 105. It'll give you 13 eye frames, which is like a fast rolling Dark Souls. Additionally, leveling up adaptability will also increase the speed of using healing items. Don't be afraid 
to experiment with your builds. Dark Souls has an item called Soul Vassal. This item lets you waste back your attributes. If you feel like you've made a mistake in your initial character creation, don't worry, just give it to the fire keep blading things betwixt your stats and location. Illusory walls in Dark Souls 2 work differently. It's not enough just to hit it. You need to press an interaction button for it to reveal itself. A tricky small detail, but a crucial one that might make you miss some of the hidden treasure. So yeah, be sure to bump into it. Every wall like an idiot spamming the reveal button. Dark Souls 2 has another interesting mechanic. It's Bonfire Ascetic. 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 An item that can revive the whole location, both included. It's a cool thing that can help you get every item that can be crafted from the soul of a boss without starting a new game plus. It's also a great tool for farming resources since enemies stop spawning after they've been killed around from 12 to 15 times. Play Dark Souls first. Seriously, not because I'm trying to hint that you should skip Dark Souls 2 or anything, but because playing the original Dark Souls will make you appreciate Dark Souls 3 even more. Playing the first game will give you a better understanding of the world and the characters in Dark Souls 3 and make the experience more rewarding overall. Speak to this guy for free level ups. In Dark Souls 3 there is an NPC named Yoel of Londa who can give you free level ups in exchange for a certain number of death. You can take advantage of this to boost your character's stats without having to spend souls. It's an easy way to get a few levels at the very beginning and I don't need to show you how to get those dark sigils fast, right? Keep in mind that Yoel will die after you enter Catacombs of Carthus, so be sure to get all five dark sigils because that will trigger another event that I'm not going to spoil. Learn to parry. It's not as hard as it seems. Why I'm suggesting it only in Dark Souls 3 is because it has more bosses that can be parried. Dark Souls 3 is way faster than previous Dark Souls games. Having this deal a lot of damage button may Simplify your existence. Okay, I guess. Use Amber's mid fight. Amber is a quite essential resource that you don't want to waste, and use it and die without even being close to killing the boss might be frustrating. So I recommend you to use it mid fight when you're certain you're going to win. Use it while your health is not full, that would save you at least one Estus Flask and will give you more confidence in your actions. Like, now it's your face too. Suck my fucking dick, bitch! I told you I could do it! This advice might be helpful to PvP folks, but works in PvE as well. Take advantage of weapon infusions. Infuse a Task Caestus. Infuse a Caestus with a blast gem and use it in the left hand while two hands in your main weapon. That will provide you with a small regeneration effect. This can be a useful way to offset some of the damage you take during combat and keep you going a little longer in tough fights. Learn Deflect and Mikiri mechanics. In this game, deflecting a taxi is more rewarding than just dodging it. The sooner you get it, the faster the combat will click for you. Don't be like me, don't die to Kenichiro more than 100 times to understand you have to aggressively deflect other than aggressively dodge. The same with Mikiri counters, once you stop being afraid of using it, not a single dude with a spear will be a problem. Don't forget to use your prosthetic tools. Sekiro's prosthetic arm is a powerful tool that can give you an edge in combat. Different enemies are weak to different tools. Beast type bosses are weak to firecrackers, Shuriken is good against dogs, thank god. And objects in the air, loaded axe may cause some trouble to enemies with shields, and so on. Experiment, explore. Use stealth. Sekiro's stealth mechanics are also important to master. You can sneak up on enemies and perform a death blow 
instantly killing them and making your life easier. And it works on bosses too, imagine. Leveling up might seem confusing, so here's a quick explanation of how it works. You can upgrade your health by collecting prayer bits, you can get them by killing mini bosses, exploring and buying from merchants. Your attack power is increased after consuming a memory of the boss you've killed. No titanite, no farming. Perfection. You can learn new skills by spending the skill points that are obtained by killing enemies and bosses, but make sure to spend it because after you die, you lose half of your experience that wasn't converted into skill points and you lose half of the gold as well. So the next tip is how to save your money. Invest. Invest it in items. Like seriously, buy consumables and buy coin purses. The price will not change when you decide to sell it, but when you die, you don't lose it. Incorporate consumables in your playstyle. You have a lot to choose from. Items that increase your damage, defense, healing items, farming items, items you can combine in combat, distract enemies, throw oil and fire them. Use it. Just use it. And the last tip, enjoy the process. And I mean it. Sekiro has one of the best and satisfying combat mechanics, if not the best that I've experienced. The amount of sheer excitement and adrenaline rush I felt during those fights is indescribable. Come on! I fucking dodged it! This game is so fucking stupid, dude! Fucking threw me off a melt! With that said, my ultimate beginner's guide is over. I hope these tips have helped you on your journey and perhaps even inspired you to try out some of these games we covered today. If you have any questions or additional tips, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my recent videos. They are all fun and really interesting and funny and unique and, and subscribe. Take care. See ya.